Hello and welcome to my channel. As you know, recently I got obsessed with MIT Minishita controllers. They're super fast, super agile and I think they should be perfect for the collaborative robot arm. I contacted the developer of this controller, Ben Katz, and he told me that T-Motor company they produce actuators with this controller. And T-Motor company was kind enough to send me two actuators for the review. Let's look at them. And here are the parameters of these actuators. The name. T-Motor AK86, the size less than 10 cm in diameter and less than 4 cm in length. It's very lightweight, less than 500 grams. Just to remind you, the other actuators which I reviewed, they were all over 600 grams. Continuous torque is 6 Nm, the peak torque 12 Nm. This is not very powerful, but it's enough for many applications, like for example for the wrist of the robot. It has the planetary gearbox with 6 to 1 gear ratio. And for the power supply you need 24 volts and at least 12 amps. And the most interesting for me is that it has the MIT Minichita controller. So it should be easy to control, it should be fast and agile. And now the unboxing time. Ta -da -da -da. And our beautiful actuator. Look at this beauty! The output shaft has the six holes for the M4 screws. You can mount the actuator either from the front, there is eight holes for the M3 screws, or from the back. And over here there is three connectors. One is for the serial port, this is for the setup, this is for the power, and for the CAN bus. Apparently it uses motor with a low KV. I think this is the same rating as the MIT Mini Chitach actuator. Ta-da! This actuator has two ways to communicate, the serial and the CAN bus. The serial you use once for the setup, so you can set the maximum current, CAN ID, you can calibrate the encoder and stuff like this. And afterwards, in order to control this actuator, you use the CAN bus. So first of all, let's look at serial just to check that calibration is done. In order to read the serial, I'm going to use this tiny FTDI board. This is how it's connected, so you see where is the ground receiver and transmitter. And I'm going to use TerraTerm serial terminal. Power supply for the actuator. And immediately we have here the parameters. First of all, we see that firmware version is 1.9. This is not the latest one, but we also see that there is offset and electrical offset, meaning that the calibration is done. So let's check what we have in the setup. The current is limited to the 40 amp. I think this is too much, so I will change to the 24 amp. And now let's look at the CAN bus. For this, I prepared Arduino with the CAN bus shield and also the wire with appropriate termination resistor. For Arduino, I'm going to use the same code which I used in my previous video about MIT Mini Cheetah controller. So if you want to learn more about this, check my previous video. I also 3D printed these two pieces, the arm and the holder for the actuator. I've made this support from aluminum profiles. I think it should be solid enough for our actuators. Beautiful! Cool! The CAN bus communication is super simple. So you need to send the desired position, speed, torque, stiffness and damper. And afterwards the controller calculates the reference torque, which is the stiffness time error in the position plus damper times error in the speed plus the torque. And this reference torque is used inside the controller for the control. And after you send these values to the controller, controller replies immediately with the actual position, actual speed and actual torque. Super easy, let's see this in practice. I'm going to connect Arduino to computer like this, I can monitor position, speed and torque from the actuator. The red one is actual position, the green one is actual speed and the yellow one is the actual torque. Enable controller. So you see the torque is low when the speed is constant, but during the acceleration and deceleration the torque is high. Enable controller. And now on the plotter we can see the torque when I apply the force on this arm. There is also backlash. We will measure it later. <laughs> Now we're going to decrease the stiffness. So instead of 100, I'm going to put the stiffness uh, 20. 
Now it's way easier to move it. And also you see that acceleration deceleration profile changed. Now let's decrease the damper. So here the stiffness 10 and the damper is 0 0.1. <laughs> you see now it's overshoot. Not very stable. Cool, you can do a lot of stuff with this. Let's now put the damper at 1 as it was before, but stiffness at 0. <laughs> you feel it dumped. But as the stiffness is zero, I can move it anywhere. So basically you see that damper works like a damper and stiffness works uh, like a stiffness. Now let's see what we can do with the measurements of the torque, with the fast measurements of the torque. I did a super simple program where I add that if the torque is higher than 3 newton meters, in this case disable the controller. Let's see what it does. It still moves like it's supposed to be. But when it hits something, it disables. Perfect. Let's try again. And it stops. As you can see, it works kind of like in a collaborative robot where they detect the collisions. So here I add a super simple line, but you can do something more sophisticated. Like for example, you can look not on the absolute value of the torque, but on the step of the torque and detect the collisions like this. It's gonna be way better than the collision just by absolute value. What is better than one actuator? Two actuators. So I set up this one for the ID2 and they are both controlled through the same Arduino with the canvas shield. And in order to illustrate different stiffness, I put here the stiffness 100 and here I put the stiffness 5. So here's a high stiffness and I cannot push it far. And here the stiffness is low. You see? There is a clear difference. And the damper is the same, it's equal to 1. And now I have the same stiffness, here 5 and here 5, but I changed the damper. So here the damper is 1 and here the damper is 0 0.2. So the difference is quite clear. I like this small illustration. With two actuators at the same time it's easy to see. I increase the speed of the actuators just to show you that they can be super fast. It's not the maximum speed. It's not even close to the maximum speed. Cool! Nice! So you see that these actuators are super agile and super fast. Excellent! And now the telepresence demo. We have two motors, so we can do the telepresence. Or more precisely, bilateral telepresence. The idea is directly stolen from the master thesis of Ben Katz. So we're going to transmit the position data from one actuator to another and also the force feedback from one actuator to another. Actually, symmetrically. My setup is not perfect for this demo because usually you need a fast microcontroller and I use not super fast Arduino. And also for this demo you need to adjust three parameters and I put some random values. Nevertheless, let's see how it works. Power for Arduino, power for the first controller, power for the second controller, power for myself. Go. <laughs> and I can feel the force on this one, the force applied here. And vice versa. Cool! For the system which is not optimized at all, it works quite nice. Now let's try like this. I can feel the force. I feel the force. May the force be with you. I also did some torque and backlash estimation. And I found that it can handle more than 10 Newton meters torque. 
I did not push beyond this value, but I think it can handle 12 newton meters. And the backlash is around plus minus 6 arc minute. Also, don't forget to check the website of the T Motor company, because over there they have many different actuators with the MIT Mini Cheetah controllers. And these actuators they have different torque rating, they have different gear ratio, and different uh, form factors and sizes. They even have an actuator with the gear ratio of 80. It's quite a powerful actuator. Okay, 80 is not quite a direct drive, but they have it. For me, three main disadvantages of these actuators is price, backlash, and that there is no temperature measurements. The third one is normal because in MIT Mini Cheetah controller there is no temperature measurements, unfortunately. But the main three advantages is that it's lightweight, it's very fast and agile, and also on the website of the T-Motor company you can find a lot of information about motor inside this actuator. Overall, I'm really happy with these actuators and I think I will find a good usage for them. Thank you for watching this video till the end. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, don't forget to put the like to this video, one or several comments, and also you can support me via PayPal or Patreon. All the links in the description to this video. And by the way, here are the names of the all brave people who support me on Patreon. Thanks to them this channel exists. Stay safe, good luck with your projects, and see you next time!